Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Laura Noland coming to you from Virtual PTC 21. Joining me today is Mark Teeley, CEO and founder of Edgevana. Mark, welcome to JSA TV. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, for our viewers who aren't familiar with Edgevana, could you give us an elevator pitch? Sure. Um, Edgevana was really created to try to solve for um, what CIOs that I worked with in the past, uh, including my own experience um, and had talking to, spoken to recently, were complaining about. And that's basically that digital transformation and um, uh, efforts to pursue edge computing were complicating their efforts to um, distribute uh, IT gear and solutions uh, to places in in disparate locations around the world. And they needed somebody that could help smooth that process and, um, and reduce the time to value. And so Edgevana is really put out there to help customers uh, compose global infrastructure solutions that include things like uh, data center white space to uh, manage services to edge to global network services, et cetera to compose those services and help you acquire them as quickly and as easily as possible, and then manage them after the fact as easily as possible, almost anywhere in the world. Well, let's go back just a little bit. And I do have some interesting stats for you, um, which are, are really remarkable. So you started Edgevana back in 2019 and then soft launched the platform in August. You already have 36 operators and more than 3,300 data centers across 107 global locations within your ecosystem. So what's been the key to the successful launch and then what's next? Yeah, I'm pretty lucky in the sense that um, uh, I, um, I managed to get uh, pretty good um, attention and um, engagement uh, through f- uh, forms of, uh, of communication and, and social media engagement like LinkedIn and Twitter, et cetera. And so, um, our launch was was made successful really by the help of friends who are interested in what we're doing, um, and my co-founder and myself, our own uh, following in both areas, LinkedIn and, and Twitter, um, and that really drove significant engagement, the kind of engagement that most PR firms would have charged $50,000 for probably, um, and so that was a, a real benefit for us. And then um, as far as bringing on um, uh, our supply, our customers on the sell side of the marketplace, um, data centers and et cetera, et cetera, is uh, I've spent uh, a good part of my career in the data center space and the edge space and the cloud space. So many of the data center folks around the world are people that I've worked with or known at some level, spoken to at events or participated with at events or, or done business with throughout my career. So my ability to engage with them and get them on board and, and get them thinking about the idea of, of a, a much more consolidated view of, of their offerings for the customer, um, making it easier for the customer to consume their product, effectively making their product more viable in a marketplace where the customer is looking for global solutions and single vendor um, solutions. Um, uh, I really had no trouble convincing them that, that uh, Edgevana was um, worth taking a chance on. Mark, your website talks about a vision for sustainability. Could you talk about why your team feels so strongly about this topic? Yeah, it's 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 probably not what I would lead first with at a um, uh, in front of VCs, but uh, um, efficiency has been part of my uh, work history from almost from the beginning, um, even from my time at HP. But especially once I started building data centers in the very early two thousands. Um, even founded an organization called Data Center Pulse with my brother-in-law um, uh, uh, and coordinated with groups like the Green Grid and 7 by 24 and others to help push for more sustainable, more efficient solutions in the data center space. So it was only natural that when I finally founded my own company that I would con- continue to pursue that. But really the kind of the underlying opportunity of what makes um, the future of Edgevana um, Uh, potentially exciting is that what we're really trying to do is make better use of infrastructure that already exists around the world. There are tens of thousands of data centers when you include um, 
uh, uh, co-location facilities and central offices, et cetera, et cetera. There are tens of thousands of locations that provide opportunity for deployment of infrastructure um, that already exist, but they're difficult to get to. So a big part of our strategy is that is based on the idea that, uh, as Christian Bellotti once said, the best data center ever built is the one you don't have to build. Absolutely. Well, Mark, I have a I've been dying to ask you this question. I understand that you have a law named after you. It's called Tealy's Law, and it states, quote, in technology, new services enabled, quickly becoming services required. All right, you got to give us the lowdown on that. What is, how did that even happen? So it, it, it happened something of a joke, right? I mean, real, realistically, I wrote it as a joke. So it, if, uh, it's hard to claim a law when you wrote it yourself. It's like saying I quoted myself, right? Um, but uh, the, uh, the basic idea came from a discussion I was having with, with others in the industry um, and specifically about edge um, with the idea being that you had to be really careful about what you enabled for customers, even if you were enabling it thinking you were doing somebody a favor. So just as a simple example, Let's say I was the IT person that supported you in a remote office somewhere. And you called me someday and you said, Mark, I really need the network to work out on the patio because I'm doing this thing and, and they're working inside and, and the patio would help facilitate me being able to do my job. And I'm like, well, that's not supported, but okay, fine. I like Laura, I'll enable the network out on the patio for her. And just so happens next week, Laura and um, Mary, and uh, um, a dozen other people have now determined that working on the patio is what they prefer. And that network has become a requirement. Well, it doesn't sound so bad until you realize that that's a very simple thing, enabling network into a new space. But what if it was a complex application or complex service? Or what if instead of just Laura being one person in one office, and that's the only place where that would ever happen, I had a thousand offices or even a hundred offices where now everybody expected that same level of service. Nobody paid for it. Nobody went through justification for it. And now it's become a requirement and I have to support it. And so the, the point of Tealy's law is that you really have to be careful that if you enable a service for someone inside a store, making it more convenient to work with customers or making it more convenient for customers to work with you in a store and you do it as a favor, you do it as just a, a thing you can do because it was easy, you're gonna find that a month later, it's gonna be a minimum requirement for opening the store to have that function work. So that's really the point of the joke originally. <laughs> well, I love the joke and I love the story. So thanks for sharing, I appreciate that, Mark. So, Mark, I'd like to pick your brain just a little bit. Uh, I know that you have an extensive track record in the tech and telecom industries, 30 plus years at brands such as, such as HP, VMware, and Ericsson. So you've witnessed quite a bit about tech trends. So what do you think has been the most impactful for the data center space? Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to argue that um, the most impactful trend over the last um 15 years has really been the focus on scale by the global players, uh, companies like Microsoft and Amazon and Google and others, right? The, the, the forcing function of needing the kind of scale that they have on um, making data centers more efficient, not just from a sustainability standpoint, but more efficient to operate, which by virtue oftentimes applies to your sustainability benefit at the same time. But um, many of those practices uh, from, from how much and what kind of air conditioning can be used to, I mean, when I was first building data centers in, in 2004, 2005, using outside air as an example was, was like, oh, sure, let's just go to Mars next week, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to do that. And now those kinds of benefits pushed by um, the scale and demand of cloud have permeated much more of the industry, driven down cost of operations. If you'd have asked me in 2008-ish um, timeframe what the cost of a, a four, I mean, a, a tier four, a one megawatt data center would be, I would say it was gonna be somewhere between 15 and $20 million. That same capability, that same capacity now might be six or $7 million. So it's, um, 
Uh, it's hard to argue with that kind of impact when you see how much scale data centers are taking up around the world. Whether or not you include the hyperscale data centers, the data center market as a whole continues to grow at somewhere between 12 and 15% compounded annually. So it's just, it's a massive market and it drives uh, an incredible amount of, um, of money in the industry. And so that efficiency is, is important, not only in being able to continue to scale, but it's efficient in, frankly, in being able to continue to offer services that don't cost any more than they do already. Well said. Well, before we wrap up, Mark, where can our viewers go to learn more about Edgevana and learn all about the great things that are happening there? Oh, well, uh, thank you for asking. Um, Edgevana is pretty easy. It's just edgevana.com. Um, uh, we have a podcast there. We have some blogs there. Certainly the website uh, has um, pretty good information on uh, how to sign up if you're a seller, how to use us if you're a buyer. Um, and uh, if you're interested in anything else that I'm writing or doing, uh, please look me up on Twitter on MTLE10. And uh, I'm also really active on LinkedIn where I'm constantly asking um, questions to test my assumptions about what is right and what is wrong in the technology space. All right, you heard it from Mark, go connect with him. And thank you, Mark, for joining us today. It was so great talking with you. Oh, thank you very much, Laura, I really appreciate it. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Happy networking. Thank you.